Hey guys, so today I'm doing a video on how to get salon results at home, how to do your manicure, in a way that looks like it was professionally done on the cheap. I don't like paying for manicures. I can't remember the last time I got my nails done. I just figured out how to do it myself, especially with all the fun colors and all the nail polish that I buy. I like to change my nail color a lot, so I think it's just nice to know how to do it. Um, in this video, I'm going to actually demonstrate how I paint because you can explain it a million times and the order and how thing, you know, how to do things and it just, you know, it helps if you actually see it. That's the whole point, right? So, I'm going to demonstrate it on one nail. I took off the polish on one of them and I'm going to show you my favorite product on how to get your nails looking amazing. Really, if you get your hands to a good condition and you get your cuticles moisturized and they're not dry, you won't mess with them and they'll look perfect and you know, you see all these people that have like perfect looking cuticles and nails and you're like, yeah, right. You can really do it, I swear. Um, so I'm going to show you my favorite products really quickly um, and how I care for them and then I'm going to demonstrate how I paint it. So I would say the biggest thing is to moisturize as much as you possibly can. I always keep some good hand cream in my purse and the first thing I always go for with hand cream when I put it on, I put it on my nails and I just rub it in and then I put it on my hands. Um, so if you do that whenever you remember, it's really a great thing and it's going to help a lot. Um, I love the Hand Food by Soap and Glory, which I've talked about a lot. It has shea butter, macadamia oil, and marshmallow, which I'm not really sure what the marshmallow does. But this is the best hand cream I've ever used for my actual nails and cuticles. Um, the other thing that's really great, I need to buy another one, is the Solar Oil. It's just vitamin E oil. If you can find that anywhere, it's the best thing that you can put on your nails. I keep this by my bed. And just whenever you remember, you know, put it on. I also use this in my whole manicure routine, which I'll share in a moment. Um, you want to get like a stone nail file rather than one that's like a paper, like that. This is my I Love Nerds one. <laughs> you know, these are great, but if you get one that's actually stone, I've heard that it prevents splitting. It's supposed to be better. I don't know. I like this one. I've had this one and it's lasted forever. It has a rougher side and a smoother side. And I shape mine right at the tips of my fingers, not stubby to where you can see my fingertips above them, like, you know. Um, but just right at the tips of my fingers, I think that's my most, like, flattering nail length for me. Um, and I just kind of do them flat on the top and then just kind of round it along the edges. Um, I have some of these. These are those things called cuticle nippers, which sound scary as you know what. I don't go, whoa. I don't go around and cut my cuticles because then they'll always just grow back. Um, once you get them in good condition, you shouldn't have to do that a lot. Um, but if I ever have like a hangnail or have some dry skin or something, you can clip it with that rather than picking it, which is never good. And then just anything to push your cuticles back. You can buy the cheap, you know, little sticks at the store. This is something that I have literally had since way before high school. I don't know where it came from. It's just a little travel like purse nail file thing and it's perfect for pushing back cuticles and it's just what I've always used. Having a nail clipper is always good but it's not necessary if you keep them filed a lot. Um, but but if you do get one, get one that is square on the end. This is a Revlon one. If you get the ones that have the little moon shape like that, it's hard to get them completely across and then you'll end up with splitting. And then getting something like this, this is just a four-sided buffer, really, really simple. I use this when my nails are totally bare, not every time before I paint my nails, but maybe like once every couple weeks. I'll buff them just really quickly. You start with side one and then go through and then switch to side two. For some reason, I think that really keeps the nail polish on longer and it gives you a smoother surface to work. Well, once every week, once every couple of weeks, um, I'll file my nails. If you get it, obviously, if they break or something, you'll want to file them more. I change my nail polish maybe every, like, four days, five days. I don't file them every single time. But when you're doing your whole manicure nail routine, you want to file your nails, like I said. What I like to do is file them and then push back my cuticles like that. Clip away anything that you see that's crazy. Don't cut down your cuticles a lot. And then you want to put the solar oil on. You can really rub it in good and really get it all over your nails. Then you have to wash your hands really good. Sometimes I even take a little bit of nail polish remover on a cotton ball and just wipe over the nail surfaces just to get them totally clean um, so that the nail polish adheres good. Then when I start painting, um, it depends on what I'm going to do. I love to do different fun combinations. This one that I've done is the Essie Damsel in a Dress, and then I put the... Living Daylights Glitter from the Bond Collection 
from OPI over it. Really fun. And I just did it over the whole entire nail since this was a bigger, more like fun, chunky okay, glitter. So we're going to start with our first color. This is the Essie Damsel in a Dress. What I do is I just unscrew it, wipe off one side. That's what I do with every nail that I paint. And normally I'd be t painting on my actual desktop, but I had to build it up a little so you could see it on the camera. What I do is I get really close to the cuticle, but not touching, and pull it out, and then meet it on the left, curve it around, meet it on the right, and curve it around. And you don't want to dip it again, but you can kind of smooth it out if there's any, you know, and then that's the first coat. The thinner the first coat, actually, the better, and then we'll build it up the second time around. Okay, then we're going to do the second coat. You can do it the same. The second time I don't really, I'm not as careful because you've already kind of got the guide. And just get it even. Okay, so that's the second coat. We're going to let that dry before going on to the glitter. Alright, now we're ready for the glitter. I'm using the OPI from the James Bond collection, The Living Daylight. It's so pretty. It's like gold and teal and silver glitter. And it's really chunky glitter, so you can actually get away with painting it over your entire nail and have it look cool, like a fun kind of almost like polka dotted effect. Glitter, you've got to be so careful. You don't want to goop it on. Um, it'd be better to do several thin coats than one giant goopy coat, but for this one I'm, I'm just going to do one because we've already got two coats of nail polish and three is a little much. So again, I'm going to show you. I'm going to wipe off the edge of the brush like that. I'm going to paint it right onto the nail. That was a lot of glitter in that one. You can even kind of wipe off the edge of the brush as you go so that you can kind of rake off some of the goop and the glitter. You're going to let this dry for just a few minutes before you put your top coat on so that you don't um, kind of move the glitter around. And to finish up, I'm using my Sesh Vite, which I need to obviously add some of that Restore stuff to, which a lot of you guys told me about, that I have never tried before. So that will be nice. So you can kind of move it to the side to get a little more on there. You don't want to goop it up again, wipe off the edge, and just paint a thin coat. With this, you can kind of paint quickly. And this stuff's nice because it leavens out your nail polish which means if you have like any sort of streaks or if you have like anything that looks like it's not so even it will actually kind of work within the nail polish and kind of smooth it out a little. So I love this stuff. It's just the best top coat ever. And it makes it super shiny which is a huge key to the like you know whole salon looking manicure thing. So Really fun. Alright, so that's it at the end. You can always take a little bit of the solar oil again and just lightly paint around your cuticles after your nail polish is set just a little bit. Um, that's always a good idea, I think, to finish things off. So, really fun. I love the effect and I really like how no matter what colors that you use, if you do this technique and you use a good top coat. Another good one is the Sally Hansen Mega Shine. That's the one that I was trying to remember the name of in my top 20 favorites nail polish video which I will link to below as well. Um, but yeah, if you do a good top coat, it's going to look like really shiny. It's just really, really pretty. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this and maybe that helped you out some. I know it was just very basic, but at least you got to see how I paint mine because a lot of you ask how I do it. So I hope that you guys enjoyed it and I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.